Hello, welcome back to the house where we talk news, celebrities, and hot topics. Listen, I know you guys are going to be super upset at my opinion regarding the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but I want to go ahead and offer a differing perspective because I kind of feel like everyone's commentary, everyone's comments on Instagram, the tweets on Twitter regarding last night's episode is just the same. It's all the same. And I feel like no one is giving Marlo Hampton the benefit of the doubt. Marlo Hampton's feelings are 100% valid. Marlo Hampton's feelings are valid. And I know you guys don't want to hear that. But it's the truth. Her feelings are valid. And I 100% agree or understand where Marlo was coming from in last night's episode, I really do, and I'll explain it. There's this kind of like narrative going around on the internet, on Beyonce's internet, that, uh, you know, Sheree is trash, she needs to leave the show, that Marlo is trash, she needs to leave the show, Courtney is trash, she needs to leave the show, Sonia is a flip-flopper, she needs to move along and run out of this race. But my thing is, listen, Marlo, did she fumble her peach? Yes, the peach was passed on to her, and I don't believe she did what she needed to do with it. No, I don't. Do I feel like Sheree's that girl? I absolutely do not. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Sheree. Do I feel like Courtney is thirsty? Absolutely. Do I feel like Sonya occasionally flip-flops? Okay, sure. I don't really see her as flip-flopping. I do feel like she flip-flopped on Drew last season. I don't see how she's done that this season. But... I understand their faults. I understand their faults. But without those women, would we have a show? Would we have a show? That's my question. Would we have a show? If Sheree didn't, you know, entertain this fake relationship with Martell, would we have a series or season premiere, excuse me, where, you know, uh, Kenya Moore can come to Sheree Whitfield with these DMs? Would we have a season premiere if Thirsty Courtney did not activate Candy Burris Tucker? Would we have that chaotic energy if Marlo Hampton did not have misplaced feelings? Now, the thing about Marlo Hampton, and I say that to say that although these are very flawed folks and they're flawed housewives, they're not really great housewives, to be honest. Like, I would rather have Lanita Leakes, Farrah Parks, and Portia Williams. Okay, my opinion. But that side of the show is needed because without it, we would not have anything to talk about. So that's number one. Number two, Marlo specifically. I feel as though Marlo's feelings are valid, but her actions are unacceptable. Okay, I'm going to say that again for those in the back who don't know how to critically think and listen. Marlo's feelings are valid. She feels the way that she feels, and I understand the way that she feels and why she feels it. But the way in which she chooses to express those feelings, I feel like, is completely wrong. Okay? So first, I'll tell you why Marlo's feelings are valid. She feels as though nobody wants to go against Queen Candy, but we can come down on Lay Archive. We can come down on, uh, what's the other one? Uh, flop it with Drew. We can make a mockery out of I fit. Right? We can talk about any and everything regarding everybody else's life. We can take all the beats that the producers give us. But when it comes to Candy Burst Tucker and her restaurant, when it comes to Candy Burst Tucker and her restaurant, no, we can't talk about that. We can't bring that up. We can't talk about Queen Candy. And I believe that because that's pretty evident in last night's episode at the city winery. Now, I don't know what the hell was wrong with Drew, right? It's not like she was spent out. It's not like she ran out of brain capacity. It's not like the mental bandwidth wasn't there. It's not like she lost her voice. It's not like she was sitting up there at the city winery doing an hour-long performance with Candace. But Drew Sedora got on stage for 30.5 seconds and sung that affirmation song. So you're not out of breath. You didn't lose your voice. You're at 100% mental capacity and bandwidth. Why is you stuttering and fluttering and so nervous? Okay, how uh, Armand Wiggins says, 
Why is Drew Sedora so spooked and nervous to bring up the Blaze incident? She could not even call it a shooting. She called it an incident. Why? We all want to know. We're all confused at the situation. She was like, so, um, uh, 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 Candy, what happened at, at, at Blaze? There was an incident. And it's like, girl, are you talking about the shooting at Blaze? That's why Marlo stepped in and was like, are you talking about the shooting at Blaze? It's like, okay, now I have to step in and be the bad guy because Drew fumbled the bag. Drew, not the bag, but she fumbled the scene, right? Y'all remember at the Blaze Taking Seafood and Marlo, uh, you know, she explained this last night in her live. But y'all remember when Eric shut down the scene, the executive producer shut down the scene at Blaze Taking Seafood when Melvin was in the sling. He was in the shot with the sling. Obviously, just, you know, a few weeks prior, he was shot at the Blaze Steak and Seafood and whatnot. He shut down the scene, broke the fourth wall and said, are we not going to talk about the elephant in the room? Then Candy says, no, we're not talking about that. And then Todd says, it's a legal matter. So again, at City Winery with Drew and, uh, you know, uh, you know, Candace Diller Bassett right behind the scenes, it was another situation where the producers were kind of like pushing them to bring it up because it's like, are we not going to talk about the elephant in the room? And yes, we are expecting Candy to talk about her life, especially if it's in the news. Yes, especially if it's in the news. If it's in the news, it's fair game. If Kim and Croy was on the show and their business is in the news, we're going to talk about it. Does Croy have another woman or person? Them, they. What's the cause for the divorce? Kim, Zoziak, are you a gambler? We want to get into some things. Did you find another big papa and you can't pay the bills, which is the reason why you're leaving Croy in his measly pension? If Eva and Michael Sterling were on the show, we would want to be all up in their business. And Drew better spill every single bit of tea regarding this divorce onto this show. I'm sorry. It is what it is and it's going to be what it's going to be. That's the nature of reality television. We want to be in your business. That's the nature of the beast. We want to be in your business. So we get that it's a legal matter. We under, well, actually, we don't get that, right? Because let me just put things in perspective for the audience. The shooting at Blaze was only cited as a legal matter one time, and that was Todd telling Eric, the producer, during the Blaze Steak and Seafood uh, scene, right? None of the ladies were there. And then Candy talked about it very briefly, vague, you know, sort of detail in the confessional. The ladies are not privy to Candy's uh, confessionals and the ladies are not privy to what was said at Blaze during that scene. Therefore, how are the ladies supposed to know that the shooting at Blaze is off limits topic if candy doesn't explain that to them right if candy doesn't say well you know it's a very tragic tragic situation excuse me right something that is of great concern however i really cannot get into the nooks and crannies of the incident because I have been advised by legal counsel to not really go into it. She did not tell the ladies that. So it makes perfect sense to me for Drew or somebody else to bring it up. There's an elephant in the room. None of y'all gonna bring it up? Y'all, every single person was scared to bring it up. And Drew, I give her props. She was the only one that had courage to bring it up. But when she brought it up, Drew said, um, uh, y'all can really tell if you look at uh, the incident that happened. Girl, this was on the news. There was a shooting at Candy's restaurant. Blaze was on the news. But poor Drew was so scared. And she was the only one with enough courage to say, and I mean, when I tell y'all, Kenya, everybody look at that girl like, if you don't be quiet, this is Queen Candy. We don't talk about anything negative that happens to her. So that triggered me, y'all. And this is why I say Candy is the queen of the show, because I believe Marlo in that moment. 
I believe Marlo in that moment. Everyone is so scared to bring up the blaze that can food. Why are you guys so scared? What are you scared of? Yes, it's a sensitive subject. Someone was assaulted by a deadly weapon. We understand that, but it was in the news and it's Candy's business. This is a reality television show. Show us the real. And this is why I said the other day that Candy is the queen of the show because not only is Candy the longest running, not only is Candy the highest paid, she gets all of these spinoffs. She gets the KFC commercials and the deals. She has the dungeon tours and the escape. She's basically damn near the queen of Atlanta. She's the mayor of Atlanta. Most Atlanta folks don't even know who Andre Dickens is, but they certainly know who Candy Burris and her Tucker is. Okay? And so highest paid, most, uh, you know, consecutive seasons being a housewife, all of that stuff. And then that even goes into the dynamics of the relationships of this show in which everyone feels so afraid to confront Candy on the basic, you know, stuff that's happening in the news. But it's okay for us to have a powwow about Floppy with Drew. But it's okay for us to have a powwow about uh, Lay Archive. It's okay for us to drag She by she broke the internet but it's not okay for us to discuss this legal matter where candy never even told them that it was a legal matter if y'all watch the show correctly you would know that only todd stated that it was a legal matter to eric the producer in a scene that did not involve any of the other housewives and y'all have to remember that us as the viewers, we have a God perspective onto the show. We, we are all seeing, we see all sides. We see what everyone is saying in the confessionals. First off, we're living in the future, watching a show that was filmed in the past. So that's number one. So we have way more information than what's being shared with us on the show. We also see everyone's individual scenes. We see the group scenes and we see everyone's confessionals. But what's being said in the confessionals and what's happening in the individual scenes is not relayed to the group scenes in real time in that moment. How are the ladies going to know that this can't be talked about unless Candy states, you know, you guys, I can't really go into that. You know, it's a very traumatic, tragic situation. I hate that it happened. But for legal reasons, I can't say too much. She ain't even say that. Candy was fed up when it was brought up. She was like, they fine. Everybody's fine. So I kind of understand how Marlo is feeling. One, because nobody wants to say nothing about Candy. And two, from Marlo's perspective, how is it that Candy is just so nonchalant about the entire situation? Now, let me also preface this by saying everyone deals with with traumatic incidents and death in different ways. But the way in which Candy has been responding to the situation is quite interesting. We're going to get into it. This reminded, this whole situation, the whole shooting at Blaze, kind of reminded, and cousin, uh, you know, Melvin being, you know, assaulted, reminds Marlo of her own nephew that was shot and killed by his roommate. Before he was shot and killed, before Marlo's nephew was shot and killed by his roommate, five, six months prior, he worked for Candy, I believe, as a cook at the Old Lady Gang, right? Okay, so he worked as a cook, Marlo's nephew, stopped working for Old Lady Gang, five, six months later, was killed. Marlo then hit up Candy and asked, hey, my nephew that worked for you recently passed away. And y'all want to know what? Candy's response was this was Candy's response Marlo said Candy Ams did you have a guy named Quentin McNeil working for you at the old lady gang Candy says yes but he doesn't work there anymore Marlo says that was my nephew he just got killed last night Candy responds with oh really I just told you that my nephew and your former employee got killed last night and your response is Oh, really? Now, listen, like I said, everyone responds to death in different ways. 
But to the average person, that is a very nonchalant, I don't really give a fuck sort of response. It is. And for y'all to pretend like otherwise is kind of weird to me. Okay. And that's why, listen, I don't have nothing against Candy Burst Tucker. I like Candy. I'm a fan. But this is why folks like Marla be saying, okay, some of y'all under some sort of spell. Because what the hell? What the hell, man? Really? Your response is, oh, really? And then later on, she decided, let me see. Um, is this it? She said, damn, I'm sorry to hear about that. Okay, everybody responds to traumatic, tragic events in different ways. Okay, we'll give you a pass. But then compare Marlo's nephew's incident to Candy's own cousin being assaulted. And look at how Candy is kind of like reacting to it. They went outside and the guy shot my cousin. How you been feeling though? You good? Yeah, bye. They go outside and he shot my cousin. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. Who cares? Happens all the time. That's Atlanta for you. My employees are felons. The crime rate is up. Moving right along. What? And then going to ask him, but how you doing now? Let's watch that again. Hold on. They went outside. And the guy shot my cousin. How you been feeling though? You good? Yeah, bye. They went outside and the guy shot my cousin. It's like, girl, why are you talking about like, and again, I get everyone responds to things differently. But the way in which Candy is responding to her own cousin's tragic incident is a little odd to me. I'm not going to lie. It's a little odd. Even if you didn't give a shit, you know, for me, if I was in a confessional, if I knew that this was going to be a storyline on television, I would kind of act like uh, I care a little bit more. A little bit more. I would act like I'm concerned just a little bit. Now, granted, we don't know how Candy was acting outside of filming. We don't know how she was. She very well could have been concerned. But from what we see, in my opinion, it's like I don't see a lot of concern there. And that's just my perspective. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to turn my phone off. The guy took him outside and he shot my cousin. Oh, well. Right? So that was a trigger for Marlo because Marlo was like, okay, I feel like you're totally bypassing the situation with your cousin. She is. Whether it's illegal or not, we get that it's legal. Please don't say that under my... I'm so sick of hearing that. It's illegal, it's legal. We get it. But from Marlo's perspective, because she never told Marlo that it was a legal situation, remember that. From Marlo's perspective, you're bypassing your own cousin's situation and I can recall a time in which I felt like you did not care about my own cousin's passing, my cousin who you, or nephew who used to work for you, right? So Marlo's trigger comes from Candy's, her perceived, uh, her, her, her perception of Candy's lack of acknowledgement of these traumatic happenings. That's why Marlo was upset. Now, I felt like Marlo, even though her feelings are valid, um, her actions are not. You, Marlo, should have not gone up to Drusadora and did all of that. That was completely uncalled for. I understand how Marlo could be frustrated at the situation, but Marlo's real beef is not with Drew, and it's really not with Candy either. It's with herself. Because I could kind of understand it a little bit more if Candy and Marlo were like this. 
But y'all not like this. Y'all like this. Candy's really not your friend. Right? And so, my advice to Marlo is, don't take up your grievances with Drew or Candy or production. You see Candy for who she is. Okay? From Marlo's perspective, she's a woman who has not, from Marlo's perspective, I'm not saying this is true, but from Marlo's perspective, this is a woman who has not shown a lot of empathy towards her own nephew or her own cousin from Marlo's perspective. I'm not saying that Candy has not shown empathy for her cousin. I'm saying from Marlo's perception. Marlo feels as though she has she did not show empathy for her own nephew and did not is not showing empathy for her own cousin. Therefore, you take a mental note of who you think this lady is and you keep it pushing. But that's not you. Th- this is not your green light to pick a fight with Drew or Candy or anybody else. These are your own feelings that you need to work out. That really have nothing to do with anybody else. And so although I do feel like Marlo's feelings are valid, her actions are not. A lot of the times, I feel like Marlo's anger and her frustration is misplaced. And I do is, I, I feel like it's a great thing that she's seen the life coach, the therapist, whoever the lady is, Miss Sharon, who, whatever her name is. Because she's got to work on that. She's got to work on her triggers because that trigger should have not been you know, laid out on Drew Sedora. And a lot of folks believe, well, Marlo wanted Drew Sedora to bring up the shooting because it's, you know, she wanted Drew to do her dirty work and she wanted her to say the word shooting and yada, 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 yada. And I feel like Drew should have had more balls and said the word shooting and should have been more forthcoming and, you know, upfront about the situation. I I do feel that way. But, um, you know, just because you feel that way, it doesn't give you a right to, like, go crazy and called you a b-i-t-c-h and like do the most like i felt like that was too much okay and so i really just wanted to come on here and give a differing perspective because i kind of feel like it's going over a lot of people's heads you get what i'm saying i don't think candy deserves backlash for anything but i do think that it's important to understand why marlo feels and thinks the way that she does Let me know how y'all feel about the entire situation. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day.